Welcome, I'm Melanie Helmke from Milwaukee Area Technical College Dental Hygiene Program. These slides on dental radiographic anatomy are to help you study and relieve. List radiopaque and radiolucent substances. Identify and describe the anatomy of the tooth and its surroundings from radiographs. Here we have a list of radiopaque structures. Calcifications can refer to calculus, bone, pulp stones, any calcified or hardened structure. Radiolucent structures are dark gray to almost black. They include sinuses, cavities or caries, soft tissues, pulp chambers and canals, non-metal restorations such as acrylic and silicate. Radiolucent structures, remember, are gray or dark. Radiopaque structures um, are light gray to white. Here the arrow points to the pulp of the tooth, which is radiolucent. The enamel is the uppermost arrow and it extends from the dentino enamel junction to the top part of the tooth. It has varying opacities due to attrition, a wearing down of the enamel. The enamel in this case is in health and is worn. The dentin makes up the majority of the tooth. It is radiopaque. The pulp is radiolucent and is the dark area in the center of the tooth and down into the roots. As people age, the pulp um, does become calcified and more opaque. The arrow on the left points to the radiolucent periodontal ligament or periodontal membrane space. It is where the periodontal ligament attaches the tooth root to the supporting bone. The arrow on the right points to the lamina dura. It is radiopaque, hard, compact cortical bone that forms the tooth socket. The arrow to your left points to the pulp chamber. It is radiolucent. Areas that the other arrows point to are amalgam, radiopaque metal fillings in the tooth structure. The upper arrow points to radiopacities of thin shell-like bones, the inferior nasal concha, inside the radiolucent nasal fossa. The nose line is particular to an individual and may not always look this shape as all the landmarks and the nose line is a faint radiopacity showing the outline of the soft tissue of the nose. The lip line is a faint opacity over the crowns of the teeth showing the outline of the lips. Nutrient canals provide nerve and blood supply, nutrient and blood supplies to the teeth and to the bone. They can be seen in any x-ray. This is a great example you, if you look closely, you can see other nutrient canals on this slide. Two radiopaque landmarks, the external oblique and the mylohyoid ridge, or in dental radiography we can call it the internal oblique lines, are shown. The external oblique is always superior or above to the mylohyoid ridge. Sometimes we only see one of these, and if we see one, it is most likely the external oblique ridge that we will see. Below the mylohyoid ridge is a large radiolucent area. This is the submandibular gland fossa and is where the submandibular gland is located. It is a depression in the bone. The very lower edge of the mandible or the lower border of the mandible appears radiopaque and is also visible in this slide. Between the premolars is the radiolucent mental foramen. Sometimes it can even appear at the apex of a tooth and look like an abscess. 
To differentiate it from an abscess, another view would be looked at, and if the radiolucency moves, it is anatomy. If it's fixed, it's pathology. Between these arrows is the mandibular canal. It is radiolucent. It has a white outline because it is surrounded by hard, compact cortical bone. Above the arrows, we see a bright white landmark. That is the external oblique line or ridge, which we have observed previously. Below the mandibular canal is the lower border of the mandible. It is radio-opaque and is also observed on this slide. In the mandibular incisor region is the lingual foramen. It is radiolucent. It looks like the hole in the donut. Around it are the genial tubercles. These are radio-opaque and they are spurs of bone for ligament attachments. This is the coronoid process. It is the one time that we see mandibular radiographic anatomy in a maxillary x-ray. It is radio-opaque. The arrow points to the zygomatic or malar bone. It looks like a rectangle. And right above the arrow is a radio-opaque U-shape. This is the zygomatic process. The zygomatic bone extends posterior from the process. The arrow points to the maxillary tuberosity. It curves upward behind the last molar. Posterior to this tuberosity, you can see an extension, the hamulus. It is an extension of the sphenoid bone and sometimes called the pterygoid hamulus. They are radiopaque. The arrow points to the radiolucent maxillary sinus. The sinus extends from the distal of the canine posterior. It is a large radiolucent area. It is outlined by cortical bone, and that cortical bone is radiopaque and forms the floor of the sinus. In the maxillary posterior region, sometimes we see septum in the sinus. There can be more than one or there can be none. They are radiopaque and extend vertically in the sinus. They are partitions of bone. Previously, we saw the hamular process. This is the arrow pointing to the hamular process, an extension of the sphenoid bone. In the very upper part of the slide at the end, you'll see a little radiopaque projection. This is the zygomatic process. Use your imagination. This landmark is seen in the maxillary canine region. It is known as the inverted or upside down Y appearance. In this case, the Y appears to be lying on its side. Um, the Y forms the floor of the maxillary sinus going to your left, a radiopaque line, going to your right, the floor of the nose where the arrow is, and then extending left from that arrow going posterior is the hard palate. The arrow in the center points to the linear radiopaque nasal septum. On either side of the septum, there are the radiolucent nasal fossa. On the slide at the beginning, we saw the inferior nasal concha inside the nasal fossa. Here we do not. The arrow points to the radiolucent line, the median suture. This is where the right and left sides of the maxilla join. The arrow to your left points to the radiolucent oval, which is the incisive or palatine foramen. The arrow above that is the anterior nasal spine. It is radiopaque and it is diamond shape or like the back of a bat or a turtle. 